This is Heresy, the miniature wargaming talk show. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to use Space Marine Legion infantry in Legions Imperialis. We're going to go through the basics of using infantry in the game, what they do. We're going to talk about the Legion tactical detachment and its upgrade units as well. We're going to talk about whether you should use those units in tactical or support detachments. And then we're going to look at some suggested ways to run your infantry detachments as well. What configurations you should use, which units you should take and how you should spend your points. But before we do that, if you enjoy the show, please do like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below if there's anything that you think or you'd like to talk about in the show. And don't forget to join us on Discord as well, which is linked in the video description down below. And now on with the show. Let's talk about infantry briefly first. So infantry have got the highest strength in the game per stand for holding objectives. And also as well, infantry are pretty cheap per stand. So you get a huge amount of tactical strength per point you spend by buying infantry as well. It's very unlikely you're going to win games without infantry in Legions Imperialis, in my opinion. Although we'll see how that shakes out. They're not actually that slow. So although most infantry only move five inches, they get to triple their move distance when they march, which is a rule I really like in this game. I think it's pretty cool. So even without transports, they can get where they need to go most of the time. They are very cheap per hit point, as I've just said. So for less than the price of a stat of a tank, you can get four, five stands of infantry, and that's a lot of hit points. So you know, regardless of what their save is, it's a lot of bodies to put on the board. And if your opponent does bring a lot of anti-tank weapons or low-shot weapons, they can struggle just to get through them all because most weapons in this game only hit on a four. So even if you don't get a save with infantry, which you still generally will as well, it's just not that easy to chew through all the infantry. They're even tougher in buildings when they do get that cover save, you know, and you're minus one to hit them, or when they're in cover, that kind of thing as well. They will die quite easily in the open, but again, because they got so many hit points for their points, they don't die that easily for their points, for what you're shooting at them. And this is why I say I find it unlikely that any army without infantry is going to be super successful in this game. Maybe that might change when we get some blast marker weapons, when we get artillery, that kind of thing. But certainly for now, not easy to remove lots of infantry from the board. The downside of infantry is that their offensive output is very short range most of the time. And also it's mostly limited to only affect another infantry as well. So although they're very cheap, they don't affect the board a lot until you're up close. But it's still high for their points cost. Tanks don't come anywhere near close to the number of anti-infantry light shots that an infantry unit itself can put out. And this is one of the reasons I don't really like heavy bolters on tanks very much if you've seen any of my vehicle videos. is because infantry just kill other infantry so much more efficiently for their points. So this isn't true in all cases. You know, there is at least one stand of infantry right now that's got a missile launcher, but that's mostly the case. And then also as well, if you're going to be assaulting, don't forget infantry per stand have got pretty much the same close assault factor as a tank, but there's a lot more of them as well. So mostly what you're going to do when you're assaulting people out of buildings is have infantry assault and other infantry, although you'll generally need some support to make that work. Tactical legionaries are the first unit we're going to talk about. So in the tactical detachment, you get four stands of these guys. They're pretty cheap. You pay 8.75 points for them. So 35 points for four stands of them to start with. And then if you add them on as an upgrade, you only pay six per stand as well. So they're the cheapest infantry in the game. They've got pretty solid stats. Two close assault factor. You know, that's about the same as most things in the game, two or three or so. They've got pretty good anti-infantry firepower at four inches. So they got the assault rule, so they double shot. So two shots hitting on fives. Every stand is the same as a vehicle heavy bolter, effectively at that at that level, but you've got a lot more of them. Pretty much there's not a lot to say about these. They're the baseline infantry unit that I think all Legions Imperialis, Imper uh, Legions Imperialis infantry are going to be compared to. They do a job, they're cheap, they do it well. As an upgrade in the tactical detachment or as a support unit separately, you can get Plasma Legionaries. So they are a pretty solid upgrade to tactical Legionaries. So they can fire at range 10, which is 6 inches more effective range. Then those tactical marines are two inches more range, absolutely. They've got plus one to hit. They've got light AT so they can damage vehicles, and they've got an AP as well. So for 1.5 points a stand, that's a pretty big upgrade. 
Although it is worth pointing out that that's effectively 25% more expensive than tactical. So in percentage terms, it's quite a lot more expensive. In absolute terms, you know, paying an extra three points for every two stands is probably not going to wildly change your army building. Although all these things will add up at the end of your army, it's probably not going to wildly change you and it's really worth the upgrade. So these are a good upgrade to tactical marines and definitely worth taking on their own merits. But, and there is a big but, for exactly the same points cost as an upgrade, one and a half points per stand, you can get missile legionaries. These have got two different choices of shot, so frag and crack for, for most people. The anti-infantry shot is 20 inch range, which is really long. It's way out range as any other infantry, similar range to tanks. Two shots, hits on a four, ignores cover and is light. So better than that plasma gun at shooting infantry by the virtue of the fact it's got two shots and it ignores cover. So significantly better at anti-infantry. Anti-vehicle, it's got the same stats as the plasma gun, but with an extra 10 inches range and it's anti-tank instead of light anti-tank as well. So whatever you're shooting at with this, it is significantly better than the plasma gun for the same points. Now, these are really, really good firepower. Four stands of these has got more anti-tank firepower than a Predator for less points. And it's got, you know, three more hit points. Way makes up for it having a lower save. These are just a fantastic unit. I think these are one of the best individual models in the game right now, in my opinion. And I'm, I'm building my army around using lots of these personally as well. And it's a real shame that these just mean that plasma guns don't really have a good use. It just kind of sucks. And I would like to see plasma buffed a little bit to account for that. Or maybe even these, you know, it probably isn't going to happen, but these could definitely be nerfed a little bit and still be pretty good, I think. Um, you know, in, in some way, maybe just made a bit more expensive. When you take the support version of these, they actually have one less close assault factor than all of the Marines which is still wouldn't make them not great, but would at least give you some reason not to take them or to take Plasma instead. Um, I am going to take Plasma in some of my units, though, just for variety, because I'm not playing this super competitively, and you can do that too. Plasma is definitely not bad. It's just that these guys kind of make them pointless from a rules point of view. Then we've got Assault Marines. Uh, I don't know if there's a law reason why these are called Assault Marines and not Assault Legionaries. Maybe one of you guys can tell me why that is, but they're called Assault Marines in the book. So they're the same price as Tactical Legionaries. They got a 7-inch move, which is great, and that means they're always going to get the charge on other infantry, assuming you position them correctly and the other infantry isn't in a transport or something like that. But they outrange all other infantry in the game, which is great from a starting point. They outrange Dreadnoughts. They don't outrange vehicles, but because they can go over terrain, they can hide behind a building and then charge over the building at some vehicles and get the drop on them and, you know, destroy the vehicles as well. So they're going to get the charge when you play them properly or give them the option to do so. Also, when you march, these guys move 21 inches, which is faster than most vehicles go. So most vehicles on the march will go 20 at most, probably more like 16. So these guys are super maneuverable and can do a lot on the table. And this is an objective game. And just having that 7-inch move with the ability to jump pack over things is, is a huge advantage. The downside to Assault Marines is they've got worse guns, unsurprisingly. So they've just got one shot at 6 inches. they got their bolt pistols. That's not very good. But they do have one more close assault factor than your average stand. Not a huge difference when you consider you're rolling 2d6 in close combat. But they are a little bit better in close assaults than most standard Marines. And quite a lot better than Solar Auxilia if you're charging them. They're independent, which means they can move separately from the rest of the detachment if you're taking them as an upgrade. So they still have to be within six inches of the detachment, but they can sort of roam around the edges, charge a separate target, etc. And they're bulky because of their jump packs, which does mean that they won't go in rhinos, which is relevant when you're thinking about what you're putting in your detachment and what upgrades you're taking. But let's focus a little bit more on how you can use those jump packs. So you've got a fair chance at assault and infantry in buildings with no extra buffs because you get another plus one when you charge a building with a jump pack. So you're going to be on plus five close assault factor. Tactical marines in buildings are going to be on something like four or five if they've got the building bonuses. So jump pack armed infantry can just charge straight into infantry in buildings and have a good shake or maybe even a slight uh, advantage over them to just take them out of buildings, which is a great thing to be able to do. 
You can pounce on vehicles from behind buildings, as I mentioned before. You can go over or around screens, so people will want to protect their vehicles from things like this, assaulting them and taking those expensive vehicles off the board in assault, because they'll often be outnumbered. They won't have their saving throws, which are normally good on vehicles. Assaulting vehicles is a really good way to take them off the board. But if you're doing that with like tactical marines, for example, the opponent can screen them out with their own marines. So these can go around the side or something like that, which is really good. The other thing these can do is drop out a flying transport. So when a transport drops a unit, it has to go into hover mode, which makes it quite vulnerable. But when you drop assault marines, they don't have to go into hover mode because obviously they can just jump out as they're flying past. In a Thunderhawk gunship, which is a larger assault transport, it counts bulky models as just one stand as well. So a Thunderhawk can carry a full eight of these, fly across the battlefield, not need to stop, drop them anywhere, and then they can charge, which is a really scary thing to be able to do for your opponent because there's not really anything you can do about that other than try to shoot the Thunderhawk down as it comes in. And I'm going to be doing that in my army as one of my key sort of troubleshooting units. Then we got Terminators, which are really good. So again, only one and a half points to stand over Tactical Marines if you take these as an upgrade although they are 50 points for four if you take them in the support unit, but they get a lot for that. So they get two more closer self factor than a tactical unit. They get accurate on their bolters, so re-rolling those fives to hit. They get deep strike, which they can't use if they're an upgrade, but they can if they're separate. They get implacable, so they never run away in combat. They get a six plus invulnerable save. They also get steadfast, so they count as being one tactical strength higher as well. One of the best things they do is they got a 4 plus save, and because you assign hits when someone shoots your units, you can assign them to the Terminators first if you want to, which means they can tank the shots. And because a lot of shots coming in at your infantry will be anti-tank or light with 0 AP, a lot of the time you will get that 4 plus save, so these can make your units quite a bit more survivable if you want to. I think Terminators are really great. They got a whole ton of rules. They're just generally better infantry than, than tacticals. The main drawback to them is that they're bulky. So they can't go in rhinos. You don't get very many of them in flyers. But obviously, we're expecting land raiders and Spartans to come out, which will change that a little bit in the future, and these will be a lot more mobile. But really good way to spend your points terminators, and I like them a lot. So with all the units being described, let's talk about taking them as tactical detachment upgrades versus in support detachments. Well, generally, everything's cheaper as a tactical detachment upgrade. And that's mostly because you've already paid the tactical marine tax, although tactical marines are good, so it's not a terrible tax, but you're more restricted in your use. So if you've got tactical marines, your jump pack marines can't go far from them, your terminators work with them quite well, and your plasma marines and missile launchers, obviously you're paying some money to take the tacticals before you take them or paying some points. So you're a bit more restricted in your use by taking stuff as upgrades, but in return for that, they're quite cheap. My personal favorite way to run stuff in a tactical detachment would be pairing them with the guns. So missile launchers or plasma guns, they're not so good if you take them on their own as a support detachment, because every time your opponent shoots them, you will lose one. If you take them with the tactical marines, you can take the tactical marines off first when you get shot. And it also means if those units do get charged, they've got a bit more bulk to the unit for close assaults as well. Missile launchers as a support option lose one close assault factor, which maybe should have been the case as a detachment upgrade as well. So they are a little bit less good when taken like that. And they're also 40 points as well. So you pay 20 points each for those first two stands, which is prob very fair, more than fair, but they are much better taken as a tactical detachment upgrade. Terminators as a support option cost 50 points for the initial four, although only 15 points for two stands after that which is quite a lot more expensive, but I would say still very much worth it. And if you do want to deep strike them, or you just want to have a brick of tactical mar of Dreadnought armor marines that are going to run up the board and fight stuff with their much improved stats, you can definitely take these as a support attachment, and they will work fine. Assault marines as well are great as a support choice, and in my opinion, the best support choice. So if I'm going to take one support choice in a... Demi company, it's going to be this most of the time, certainly for now. And they're, they're really good in a Thunderhawk, as I mentioned before. You can fully utilize the speed of their jump packs. They're not tied down to a bunch of tactical marines. And they're still cheap. You get four stands for 30 points to start with. These are not expensive, and they do a lot on the board. 
and I think they're really good and they're my favorite support unit. So how would I recommend running all these then? Well, they're all good units and they're all, you know, playable. Bar the plasma, which is unfortunately just a worse missile launcher, but you know, it's still good. You can still take them, particularly if you're trying to be a bit less competitive or want to paint some models with some variety. How I would run these though, tactical marines plus missile launchers is my favorite way to run that core detachment. So full missile launcher upgrades, some tacticals, put them in rhinos or not, depending on where they're going to go. The main problem with that right now is the cost because you only get two and a bit stands in every box of infantry, which means you've got to buy a lot of infantry just to get these missile launchers. So you can use plasma as an alternative in this way for all the reasons I've said as well, and that's fine. Or maybe at some point we'll get a box that's got nothing but heavy weapons in it. But this is a great way to run your core detachment. The other way that I like to run a core detachment of, of tacticals is just by adding some terminators in a sort of 50-50-ish mix. So you add some more tacticals and a bunch of terminators, and that just gives you a fairly cheap unit that can sit on an objective it can't use rhino so it works best on backfield objectives and has got that enhanced save and throw capability some of my army builds i've just got a unit of a basic um, detachment of tacticals with one terminator upgrade just to give them a, a couple of extra bodies and some slightly better saves and i just sit those in objectives that are far back out of the way in missions that i've got those maybe the opponent never gets to them maybe they do but they're a bit tougher to kill it's kind of a good way to use those Terminators. That said, though, there's really nothing that stops you from just mixing and matching the missile launchers, maybe the plasma and the Terminators just all in one unit. The Terminators can be there to make things a bit tougher, and then you've also got the guns as well. I don't really like the Assault Marines in these tactical detachments because they just lose a lot of their flexibility, but everything is so cheap as a tactical detachment upgrade, you really can mix and match them to your heart's content, I think. When it comes to taking support detachments, you do get quite a lot of flexibility in the Demi Company, and you've got to take at least one in the Demi Company as well. So my favorite is the eight Assault Marines, as I've mentioned. They're a utility unit for objectives. They can go anywhere. They can basically kill anything. They can jump out of Thunderhawks. These are good in every Space Marine Legion, but I particularly like them in Dark Angels because they get that Phosphex. So the opponent doesn't get a close Assault bonus for being in a building. So your Assault Marines are charging at plus 5 close Assault Factor, and enemy Marines in the building will normally be 2, maybe 4 if they're Terminators, and you're going to win a lot of those combats. I really like that Dark Angel's ability. I think it's underrated. And obviously the World Eaters as well, getting to reroll one of their dice. These have just got big numbers. They can go anywhere, threaten anything. I really like these. Terminators likewise as well. You can Deep Strike them, and they would be fine just as a 4 because they're superior to normal infantry but as an eight if you're going to pay that 50 points for the first four you might as well pay the extra 30 points for another four on top as well you can deep strike them or they can just deploy on the table into a building or something if you've got a backfield objective to hold unfortunately they are a bit bulky for aerial assaults so if you drop these out of a thunderhawk you'll only get four in a thunderhawk and it would have to hover to drop them as well so i don't think that works great but you can deep strike them so that's fine where I think these are really going to shine because they're so good for their points is when we get those transports for them. I think infantry holding objectives are really going to struggle when you can roll up a bunch of land raiders, drop terminators out, and either just drill them with the bolters or charge them in as well. So that's going to be pretty cool, depending on how land raiders is barred and shake out as well. And that's the end of the show. I hope I've given you a lot of useful information on all of these units for you to consume there and some great ideas on how you can build your own formations and detachments to get the best use out of your infantry if you did enjoy the show please do like and subscribe drop me a comment down below even if it's just to let me know that you enjoyed it i'd really appreciate that and do join us on discord as well which is linked in the video description below the heresy community is waiting to chat to you so i'll see you all soon thanks for listening and bye bye